Ariel Helwani post-fight at Bellator 222 alongside Dylan Dennis, who submitted Max Humphrey tonight in the first round via armbar. Congratulations on your second pro win. Were you happy with it? Um, yeah, it was. It was in a sense because I got it done with adversity, but my f like I'm so much better than that. Like my fluidity and like the way I set up moves are so much more, you know, advanced. But I got it done, so that's all that matters. Were you hoping to win via TKO? Did you want to ground and pound him? <laughs> I'm not going to lie, it was really fun beating his ass, I swear to God. I felt like it was like, I don't know, man. It was just weird to explain when you start fucking hitting someone 100%. Because like, I never fought before. I never had amateur fights. And in the gym, you're not, not you know, hitting someone. So once I got out there and I started grilling. And I actually learned like a lot. I learned like a lot in the fight, too, because like the referee was like, oh, we're going to stop it. So I started going like crazy. And then all of a sudden, he kind of like had like a second win. I was like, oh, shit, man, my arms, you know. So it kind of was like good to learn that in the fight, you know. But yeah, it was fun to beat his ass, I swear to God. It was really good. My understanding is you went into this fight somewhat injured. Could you tell us about that? Yeah, so uh, the Friday before the fight, so one week before the fight, I tore my LCL completely. Um, I couldn't walk, couldn't stand. Like, it, it was terrible. And, man, I didn't know if I could do it, I swear. Like, but, you know, I just, I felt like, I feel like, you know, if I did it now, eventually I'm going to have to do it. So, like, I, I took it as, like, a life experience. And I, and I, and I, and I, and I pulled it off, so it's really, it really makes everything sweeter, you know? That's why I kept thinking, like, you know, it just adds to your story. And uh, it's all sweeter in the end, you know? Which knee? I don't want to. No, it was my left knee. But you see, I had the two uh, knee braces on, so I wanted to make it look like it didn't. I felt like a freaking old man, like old man wrestler with two knee braces on. But, you know, we got it done, man. I'm not, like, I'm not just all talking, you know? Like, I'm going to show up and fight no matter what. So I had no leg, basically. I couldn't stand on it. I couldn't bend it. I couldn't pull up my – I couldn't even play guard this whole week. I couldn't play half guard, nothing. So I just, like – Either you're going to do it or not. And, like, one of my friends said to me, like, if you were in the street and this guy attacked you and you were fighting for your life and you had no LCL and I have, like, my knee was completely immobile, would you still beat him? And I was like, you know what, yeah. So just so went out there and did it. How does it feel now? Terrible. Can't walk. Yeah, I, I need some proper 12. <laughs> I need something. I need something to numb this thing for sake. Like I'm dying. <laughs> do you think you'll need surgery? I don't think so. I don't have an MCL or a meniscus. So I just Where to go? I went away with a heel hook. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm just going to have nothing in my knee. And I don't know, man. I think when you have a will and you and you want something, you know, you, there's, there's excuses and then there's a way. So I think 95% of fighters would have pulled out of this fight. 95. And I kept telling myself, like, y you're different, you know. And this is why you're going to be the best. And even John Jones this week said, like, this is Mark my words. This guy will never be champion, you know. But he wouldn't be champion with without the stuff he was taking. You know, he's a cheater. So he can... Sorry, that ESPN. No, it's all good. We'll we'll bleep it. Uh, shades of UFC 189 when your friend Connor fought Chad Mendez with an injured knee. Did you ask him for advice how to deal with this mentally and physically? Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, we talked about it a lot, and he he was just like, you know what, man, like you could do it. So we we obviously talked back and forth. He was making sure how was it this and that, and uh, you know it was just he's always there for me with advice, man. He feel like he's been through it all, and you know, so it's like he he knows everything, and he knows the mental side and the physical side. So, you know, he's obviously a great mentor to have. I wish he could have been here. He was supposed to be here, but, you know, he didn't make it. But it would have been awesome to have him here. When would you like to return? I'm ready for anybody, man. I mean, watch, like, watching the main event is like, man, that's not me, you know. Like, I mean, You think you're better than them? 100%. Um, I was saying this before, like, even, like, Nailman, like, <laughs> even back in the day in jiu-jitsu tournaments like we would get him the first match and like me and my friends would be high-fiving be like oh that's the easiest match like we gotta we gotta buy the first round so like that's he's not the level that i am you know i'm a world champion and he, he never won the world he never touched the pan am championship so you know it's a different level man and people will see well i know you're injured but uh, you look very good i yeah. must say i mean the shoes here are something else this outfit it's all on camera though because that was the whole yeah. point of it no? oh, charlie you get a good look uh, at uh, dylan dennis here whole package. i got the whole thing man yeah. i come out you know i got the crowd going, and i fought and then i got the after so you know what i mean it's it's a different level with me i feel you know this is not just a normal fighter you saw even out there all the pressure and everything this show was i was the co-main event basically you know so and uh, I, when you're this good you don't feel pressure so and you got to do it at MSG, something you've always wanted to do, right? I didn't even set in yet, but it did set in when I first came here. And I, like, I thought I wasn't going to be like, I was like, yeah, you know what? Like, I fought everywhere, like this and that. And then I kind of got here and I was like, this is MSG, you know? So it was super surreal. Even when I came out and the crowd was going crazy, I could see all my friends and family. But, uh, yeah, I think it hasn't set in yet. I think later on it will. Congrats, Don. Feel it. better. Appreciate it very much. Looking forward to the next one. Thank you, man. Appreciate it.